Welcome to the Write Good Books podcast, the audio companion to writegoodbooks.com with your host, Jason Boga. Hello, everybody. We're back at the podcast. I'm Jason. I'm joined again by our co-host, Scott Michael Childers. Are you doing okay? I'm doing fine. You're not sad today? I'm not sad. No, good. That makes one of us. I've been sad. Oh, poor oh. And <laughs> poor I'm going Jason. to, yeah, everyone, yeah. pull out the violins. Today, we'll use my platform of the podcast <laughs> to rant about writing. Now, we've, um, in all seriousness, we've done a podcast on time management, maybe two even. And we've done some on when you feel discouraged. And uh, I'd kind of like to group that together and do one just on how to kind of keep yourself in check maintain your sanity and stay healthy when you're trying to pursue your writing dreams or really any other part-time gig because mm. it can really take its toll yeah anytime you have some sort of side hustle yeah yeah um, the side hustle can really drag you down if you're not ready for it yeah so uh, you know i'll throw this out we did e- heavy ebay for about a year and we weren't prepared for the amount of stuff you collect in your house. All of a sudden, your house is a, a warehouse, and then to maintain your cellar rating, you have to get stuff shipped same day. So there were plenty of late nights where I'm bundling up comic books or trying to find where some clothes are stashed before we get them out, and that takes its toll. And so does writing. Regular readers may have noticed I put up my little I'm taking a break from blogging for a little bit to work on my book, and... Uh, a lot more of that was I just needed to refresh myself and, and get back into a little more of a sanity routine. Sanity routine? A little bit of... That could be a band name. Yes, I think it's a pro wrestling group. But yeah, we digress. We do. You threw out the pro wrestling term this time. I know. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations on those of you who had Scott with the under two minutes. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, that's enough of my pity party. So what do you do when you're working and you're a little overwhelmed and you need a break, but you feel guilty for taking a break? I record a podcast. There you go. No. I I think a couple of things. is One, you think about why you're doing the side hustle, whether it's writing, Mm eBaying, whatever. In our case, writing usually. Why are you doing it? And if you're doing it strictly for the money. Find another hobby. (laughs) Well, you need to enjoy that side hustle, Mm -hmm. right? And maybe it's, I'm doing the grind, so that way it it stops being a side hustle. And it becomes my main job. So you keep that in mind. Why are you doing this thing? So that's one thing. It's like, why am I doing this side Mm -hmm. thing? I try to keep in mind. The other thing is, you know, trying to keep your body healthy, and I'm not saying you go out and, you, you know, you, you bulk up and become you know, a triathlete, unless that's your thing. But I mean, even doing the barest minimum to keep your, your body somewhat healthy helps your mental state. It does. And uh, I was an exercise nut until child number one. And then, you know, it was cut in half. And then with child number two, that was cut in half. Child number three, it disappeared. And child number four, I do negative exercise. And that really has hurt my psyche. So, and even even just getting sleep, yeah, even just getting some sleep and not doing that constant crunch. There have been many studies out there that talk about the importance of sleep. Yeah, and his name escapes me now, but one of those self help YouTube guys says mm-hmm. he gets nine hours of sleep, and that's his highest priority. And I'll have to credit him in the credits because I don't want to steal what he's saying. But what he's saying is perfect. He said, you know, you could get four hours of sleep and work longer, but it's not going to be quality work if you're not well rested. Exactly. Which is interesting because I'll throw out my wrestling reference. They say Vince McMahon's a four-hour sleeper at work till five in the morning, get up in three hours and go hit the gym. There are some people whose biology function that way. But yeah. that number is a lot smaller than many people yeah. think. And so people will, some people will say, well, I really don't need that much sleep. And they're really fooling themselves. Oh, yeah. So I'm not going to tell, tell a person that, no, you really, you know, you're <laughs> lying to yourself because I don't know them. I'm not a doctor. I haven't right. done the sleep studies. But if you're feeling drained, you might want to try getting an eight-hour yeah. night of sleep. Because I'll tell you and our listening audience – my five and a half hours of sleep is not enough. So that was part of the reason I stepped away from the blog for a couple of months. And just get a good chunk of that book done. Yeah, that helped. Um, so yeah, there's that. It's, it's number one, 
keeping up your mm-hmm. physical. That if you could get some exercise, even just a little bit, stretching at your desk. Take look, the stairs when you can. Yeah. yeah. Park a little bit further from your building so you get a little bit more walking in. You know, little things even mm-hmm. can help. So, yeah, I'm not saying you have to go out and all of a sudden run a, an ultra marathon. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can do some little things that get you a little bit more active, that will help because if your body's healthy, then your brain can function a little bit better because it's part of your body, right? And, you know, for some of us, writing can be a stress reducer, but for some of us, it's not. And, you know, maybe a little bit of exercise helps blow off some of that stress, burn off some of that stress. Get rid of some of the stress. Look at us, the human thesauruses. Yes. (laughs) Well, and then there's other authors that they'll take a walk and that's when they get inspired. That's when they get ideas. I remember hearing that, I think it was Kevin Anderson goes hiking and dictates his books to a recording device while he's out hiking. Yeah. You know, I should try that in the car. Hiking while you're in the car? <laughs> I, I would not write well, that. I meant writing, bitch. Yeah, that brings a new dynamic to the commute. Yeah, add some adrenaline to it. So what else is on your list of things to help keep people in tip-top writing form? Well, when, when you do get discouraged or feel overwhelmed, figure out why that is. With me... It was because I was putting so much effort into the business of writing and uh, being a writer instead of writing that I I needed a solution. Mm -hmm. And not having a solution to some, you know, if you have a problem with no solution, that's when you feel overwhelmed. And that's when, you know, you get the dark thoughts of how am I ever going to get out of this or whatever. So I, I said I was feeling bad about not writing enough fiction. So I took a little break from regular blogging to work on the book a little bit more. And that really has helped. And, you know, another thing that... For me, and hopefully this helps the listener, if, if you have little visible goals that you can achieve, that'll keep you going and, and maybe push away some of that negativity. Uh, three or four years ago, when I was writing short stories exclusively, I'd keep getting publishing credits and then I felt, you know, I was accomplishing things. Mm-hmm. And, and now that I'm just doing novels, I'm not seeing progress in, in that area. Oh, yeah, because it moves at a much slower pace. Mm-hmm. So then all I'm seeing is blog posts, and then I'm making the mistake of, oh, well, that post didn't get any traffic, so why am I doing this? And, you know, mm-hmm. one thing leads to the next. And, but so what, I, what I'm what i doing now is I'm setting small, tiny <laughs> daily writing goals. And, and, you know, we've talked about this on, our, on some of our goal podcasts, but, you know, having that tiny little writing goal is enough to get you started, and sometimes that's all it takes. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you have a... 150, 200 word goal that you could probably reach in 10 minutes. It's it's so much of, of hitting your writing goals, just getting started. And then, you know, it's like, you know, you have a tiny goal you can hit. So then you just start, do it. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I still have another hour and a half. I can keep writing without any. And I think you touched on something with, with that is, you know, a lot of times we get kind of stuck. And so taking that step back, mm-hmm. kind of reducing our mentally required output that we've set ourselves up for and just say we're take, going back we're not necessarily taking a step back but we're resetting yeah and refocusing and making sure that we're working off of a good foundation and then like you said after a while you start building on that and you could end up doing more writing than mm-hmm. your daily writing goal or whatever but that's what we're talking about here is like kind of recentering re planting your feet, you know, getting a good foundation underneath you so you can grow again. What, whatever kind of visual terminology you want to use for that. Sure. And, uh, you know, now, now that we're old, <laughs> 20 years ago, if somebody, what was I into 20 years ago? Uh, well, we were doing dart leagues. We, we were competitive dart players. Yeah, and wow, if I could do that all over again, the temper tantrums I used to throw, I was like, what in the world? But... <laughs> You know, we were competitive dart players, you could say. And we were. We went to, you know, we got some trophies and whatnot. Yes, that is true. um, If you would have said to me then, you know, you'll be better at this if you take better care of yourself. (laughs) I'd be like, what are you talking about? I just got to do it. I just need another glass of beer before my next round. (laughs) And yeah, and sometimes that doesn't even help with writing. (laughs) If you're 21 or older. (laughs) But I would have never thought that, like, how you take care of yourself would affect your success level at things you attempt. Yeah. It just seemed like um, something completely separate. Yeah. But now it's like, now that we're old. Experienced. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> wiser. Now that we've acquired the... I don't know about our, how wise we are. Our wisdom bonuses have increased. It's just, 
even little things like you know it when when you eat better you have more energy and then you can write longer or you know you're not so drained when you get home from the day job or you know the get better rest if i do exercise a little bit i can carry the kids around easier i'm not as drained when it's writing time after they go to bed. Yeah, well, yeah, I agree. Because like we said earlier, mm -hmm. you know, your brain is in your body. Yes. I mean, if your body is falling apart, well, your brain is trying to, to keep things together. And that's where it's occupied mm -hmm. as opposed to. And, and yeah, those of you brain scientists out there will tell me <laughs> how I'm wrong. And I, I will agree with you fully. I'm, I'm oversimplifying things. Sure. But how you treat your body is how you treat your brain in quite a lot of cases. Yeah. If you want your brain to come up with really cool stuff to write about, you need to treat it well, so you need to treat your body well. And, and you know, we're not saying go out and change everything completely, right? right. This isn't New Year's resolution. We're going to, you know, change everything completely. Little steps can make a big difference. Yeah, they can. And really, for writing, I, I know so many writers that, and you probably see this in, in other, you, know, you probably see this with musicians and artists as well, where... You know, it's so hard to achieve the level of success we we uh, shoot for in, in this area. So sometimes jealousy or envy might creep in. And then, like, with me, really seeing these writers on Twitter saying things like, you know, I pushed out 5,000 words last night, and here I'm struggling to get 50 or whatever. You know, you get discouraged pretty easily. And I think taking a step back and taking care of yourself makes it just easier to accept reality, if yeah. that makes any sense. Well, and to build off what you're saying, I mean, it, the nice thing about writing is, in reality, it's not as competitive as some people would like it like to believe. That is true. Just because someone else has mm -hmm. a, a writing deal or put out 5,000 words one day or this or that or the other thing, that does not necessarily take away your book from right. its audience right. as you're writing. You just may not have found your audience. And, you know, there's people out there who are widely su successful who say, yeah, I got lucky. Yeah, There's a bit of luck in that. So yeah. don't, don't get, don't let comparisons get in the way. That's right. My One of my favorite writing quotes are, another writer's success is not your failure. Yeah. You know, and we're not, yeah. We're not really competitors. We're all on the same team. And like I say on my uh, about on, on recordbooks.com, you know, we're, you know, when one writer makes it, we all make it because successful writers bring in new readers and the bigger pool of readers, the higher the chances of you and me and Scott and everybody else getting discovered are. Yeah. So, so we're not therapists. No. We don't even play them on TV. I don't even play one in an advice column or anything like that. No, not really. But yeah, pat people in the back. <laughs> but I don't know. I like getting this stuff off my chest. I hope it was helpful to you, the listener, and the writer a little bit. And I suppose we're out of time here. So be back next time, and we're going to look at... We're going to look at a cliche, aren't we? Yeah, some of the common writing cliches. So tune in, and... Hey, if you like us and want to support us, go to www.patreon.com slash writegoodbooks. Did I get that right? You did. Excellent. That's my contribution to help awesome. us. Awesome, and check that out on the web at writegoodbooks.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. See ya.